One byte just isn't enough. Three bytes is too many. I mean, even if your holiday party is just for two people this year, the number of bytes in your appetizer needs to be just right. And that's why we're going to talk about the five categories of two-byte appetizers today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. Uh, This is the weekly show for the methods, techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. And we're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. Uh, Here, by the way, is the schedule of remaining live broadcasts for the year. Uh, Then I could use some time uh, cooking alone for for a change without 800 people looking over my shoulder. Next Tuesday, here's the schedule. You want to take a screenshot or something. Next Tuesday, the last Carefree Cooks Code broadcast of the year. And then the next two Thursdays, the next two Saturdays are going to make it an even 177 lot. That's not an even number. Uh, it, well, nonetheless, 177 live broadcasts in 2020, 49 Carefree Cooks Code episodes on Tuesdays, and 128 live cooking segments on Thursdays and Saturdays. Some quick math, 177 broadcasts out of 365 days means we've been together on average every other day for the entire year. And I'm really proud to say, to feel as if I've fulfilled my commitment to you. I'm confident that I've given great benefit to the people out there that have to stay at home and cook their own food. I have not missed a single Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday since we all entered lockdown in March. And we're going to stay that way through the end of the year at least. Uh, I'll be back (laughs) well rested with a lot of new ideas and lessons in 2021. Uh, also, you can find all the past videos at facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. And if you want to see what I'm cooking uh, when we're not live together, which is only every other day, <laughs> evidently, uh, follow Chef Todd Moore on Instagram as well, because I'm a carefree cook. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together virtually. Uh, I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods. It makes me wind up loving my cooking. Uh, Hey, you know, it's the most wonderful cooking time of the year. Uh, Even if you don't have a big audience for your holiday party this year, you can still be really proud of the appetizers you can create, even if it's just the two of you. You can pretend it's a big party. You can pass appetizers to each other. Oh, sir, do you care for a mini chicken wellington yes thank you very much oh, and then you give the tray to your husband or wife and then she goes oh ma'am would you like you can both be servers you can both be guests at the party it's like heather and i this year i mean i, I still plan to have some great holiday appetizers, even if it's just for the two of us, because so many of them freeze well. You can take out two or four at a time. So maybe the last three weeks of this year, the last three weeks left in 2020, this is where you can really impress yourself and your your bubble, for that matter, with what you've learned in 2020, demonstrating your carefree cooking skills that you've been honing over the last 12 months and end with this fantastic end of the year appetizer party and you don't need more than one person to do that (laughs) chef and guest at the same if you have two even better and if you want to make it even fancier call it an d'oeuvre party go ahead and spell that for me if you can instead of appetizers call it a d'oeuvre and it'll be that much fancier all right first uh we've got another what am i for you today looks like a list of ingredients a bunch of things in there. I see, ooh, I see some liquor. 
Uh, that always gets my attention. Take a good look at that and tell me in the, the, the comment section below, what am I? It has a holiday theme. I'll give you another second to see what those things are. What am I is our game uh, for the chat below today. Hey, look, before I forget, let me wish everyone, because there's only one more Carefree Cooks Code episode, uh, I don't want to forget to wish everyone happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, <coughs> Happy Kwanzaa, uh, Happy Universe, uh, happy winter solstice, solstice, no matter no matter the source of your happiness, no matter where you get your appreciation from, uh, I wish you more of it. This has been a, a frightening year, to say the least. And there is a lot of bad that we could all focus on and get ourselves even more blue this time of the year. Make yourself feel even worse by concentrating on the bad things. I mean, we know... This year has been difficult, right? And we're not going to be surrounded by friends and family over the next few weeks. So you've got to find another source for your joy. Don't, don't just give up on joy. Find another source. And I want to challenge you to take a few minutes every day over the next three weeks and celebrate your life. Celebrate all the things that you can think of to be thankful for, it's worth taking a few minutes. I mean, again, sure, there's a lot of bad in the world, but focusing on that doesn't improve your life. This is the time to think about how fortunate you are. No matter how you define fortunate, a lot of different definitions. And that's why I want you to throw yourself a little two-bite appetizer party this year. And I'm here to give you the five categories of hors d'oeuvres so you can amaze yourself with the variety that you cooked for yourself, <laughs> I guess. Look, let's start off the class with the definition of an hors d'oeuvre. An hors d'oeuvre, whether it's hot or cold, they're very small portions of food uh, to be uh, served before the meal to stimulate the appetite. And it's a French term, of course, hors d'oeuvre translates as outside the work. And its usage really comes from the classic kitchen brigade system that we've talked about in my episode, How Many Chefs Do You Have to Be? Because hors d'oeuvres originated from the service staff's responsibility to prepare small little tidbits for the guests to enjoy while the kitchen staff was preparing the meal. They're, they're generally uh, the first course or, or introduction to a meal. They're made out of the, the discarded tidbits, little things left from the kitchen, and the wait staff was responsible for this. They're, they're more typically served with dinner than lunch. You really don't have a lunch appetizer, but preparing hors d'oeuvres and appetizers uses skills from almost every section of the kitchen. Because hors d'oeuvres and appetizers, they can consist of meat or poultry or fish or shellfish, vegetables, potatoes, grains, pasta, fruits, baked goods. They got sauces. They require a working knowledge of all these foods and how they're prepared. But you would think that makes them so difficult, right? But no, there's really only two limitations on the type of food and the manner of preparation that can be used for hors d'oeuvres. And that just really comes down to the chef's imagination and the foods at your disposal. Even though hors d'oeuvres and appetizers encompass everything in the kitchen, every part of the kitchen, there's still no rules. But there are a few guidelines to follow. So let me give you a few guidelines for preparing your hors d'oeuvres because that's a fancier word. First, they should be small. Okay, one to two bites at, at most. They should be flavorful, right? Seasoned, but not overpowering. You, they're supposed to ready the palate, not shut it down. Uh, appetizers hors d'oeuvres should not have Carolina ghost reaper peppers in it or something. <laughs> they're going to ruin. This shouldn't be very creamy either because you ruin a person's appetite. They should be savory or pungent or citrus, uh, something that's going to get you ready, visually attractive, and they should complement the foods that are to follow without duplicating the flavors. If you're serving chickens, 
the chicken don't serve the chicken Wellington. So let's talk about the five categories of hors d'oeuvres. And this is all meant for you to get an idea. I'm going to give you the categories. You know, this is normally the way I teach. I break everything down into a category and then give you some ideas, but then you probably go, oh my goodness, I can wrap something in something. I can stuff something in something. I can skewer something in something, right? You can do these things. It's just up to your imagination, which ingredients you're going to use. So let's start out with filled pastry shells, savory, generally unsweetened tartlets, uh, shoe puffs, uh, a little other small dough products. They're most often baked to remove the moisture content and then filled with warm meat, poultry, uh, purees, shrimp, fish, uh, vegetable ragouts. How about doing a ratatouille and then putting them in little pastry shells? They're garnished, usually served hot. The problem here is they become soggy really quickly, so they got to be prepared as close to service as possible or use a, a dry type filling. So things that I used to prepare that were similar in my catering company, these were amazing. These were mini, uh, we did them holiday time, mini chicken cornucopia. And it was julienne green pepper, julienne red pepper, julienne chicken, bits of tomato with a little bit of salsa. We had these little mini tortillas. We would fill them and roll them in like a horn. So it was the horn of plenty kind of thing. Uh, I would do my chicken salad in a uh, little phyllo shells with my amateurly. I got better at the, at the cantaloupe chicken, but don't, don't laugh at my cantaloupe chicken there also. And my famous chicken Wellingtons, little mini chicken Wellingtons that you can do with beef with a lot of ingredients also. All right. The second thing you can do are brochettes, skewers, kebabs, things like that. Hors d'oeuvre brochettes, they're usually small skewers. They hold a combination of meat, poultry, game, fish, shellfish, vegetables. You could skewer mushrooms and, and, and cucumbers or things like that. They're normally baked. Grilled is really nice, putting grill marks on them, broiled, and a lot of times served with a dipping sauce. Here's a key for you that you probably should know. If you're using wooden skewers, soaking those skewers in water beforehand can prevent them from burning on the grill or in your oven. So get yourself uh, wooden skewers or get small ones or thicker toothpicks. You know, this is a mistake people make. Your skewer doesn't have to have a hundred items on it. You can skewer one tomato and, and one shrimp on a skewer, great hors d'oeuvres. Uh, things like a, a caprice salad with tomatoes and mozzarella. Shrimp that are skewered with another piece of meat, prosciutto or bacon or something like that. Or just uh, like things where you would do uh, like fondue bits of meat on skewers in boiling liquid is dangerous, but nonetheless, you can skewer just about anything. Uh, if you were to take those skewered meats, grind them up and combine them with fillers, you'd have meatballs. Meatballs from ground beef, from veal, from pork, from poultry, uh, a lot of times served in a sauce, buffet style. One of the caterer's tips I can give you about meatballs is they stay hot forever. You put meatballs in a sauce on like a chafing dish or in your crock pot, they, they, they don't deteriorate. Uh, you can use fish or shellfish that are bound with egg whites or a velleté. You can make a fish meatball with egg whites or a previously made white sauce or bechamel to create a, a fish meatball kind of thing. And th this is exciting. Get away from ground beef with your meatballs. Uh, we used to do, uh, oh geez, I could wish I could remember. Oh, uh, I would consider crab cakes meatballs also. We did crab cakes, uh, Swedish meatballs as well with a sour cream sauce, or we would line them up. This is not my picture though. Uh, and individually skewer the meatball. Instead of a chafing dish, they go past on a tray, individually skewered, and that's a good way to do them as well. Uh, you could talk about rumaki. Uh, rumaki traditionally were made by wrapping chicken livers in bacon and broiling or roasting them. Today, however, this is a, a wide variety of things that you could do. Many other foods prepared in the same fashion and call them rumaki, right? Uh, blanched bacon, if you're going to do bacon-wrapped scallops or bacon-wrapped olives or bacon-wrapped asparagus or bacon-wrapped water chestnuts. How about bacon-wrapped pineapple? How about prosciutto 
wrapped pineapple or melon, right? A meat wrapped around something else, a romaki, but I say blanched bacon. You gotta pre-cook that bacon first, otherwise it's really gross. Undercooked bacon around a piece of fruit. Um, thinly sliced meats like prosciutto, uh, 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 Spanish hamon, salamis can be used really in the same way to make a romaki. Uh, it, it's easy to do. Wrap one thing around another thing and roast it or bake it. Uh, little mini hot dogs uh, wrapped around a pastry dough could be done that way as well, or wrapped around bacon. Uh, how about bundles of asparagus or broccoli or jalapeno peppers wrapped around hams? Uh, how about taking a, a pastry dough or wonton skins that we'll talk about in a minute, wrapping a shrimp that way? Just an endless number of things that you can do. And speaking of stuffing and wrapping, how about wonton skins, puff pastry, phyllo dough, all those things. When you use a wonton skin, like an Asian noodle, you get a whole bunch of different uh, possibilities. Miniature uh, egg rolls, right? No matter whether you're using wonton dough or not, you can wrap a bunch of vegetables or proteins in phyllo dough, in rice paper dough, in spring roll dough, things like that. Uh, you can fill them with cream cheese and crab. Uh, really, they can be filled with anything that your creativity allows. And then your skins, your stuffed or wrapped item, they can be fried, deep fried, pan fried, steamed like with dumplings. Dumplings are a great idea for appetizers. Uh, things like uh, uh, phyllo, uh, uh, spanakopita is a great spinach, sauteed spinach, onions with feta cheese wrapped in phyllo. It's too easy. Puff pastry around beef or chicken, uh, the chicken mini chicken wellingtons that I've shown you before. Too easy to make little tricorn appetizers with wonton dough here. Put things in there. Wonton wrappers in your uh, muffin cups make a really nice holder for appetizers as well. Or uh, how about dredging a, a jalapeno uh, popper stuffed with cheese? And then, I mean, come on, there, there's just endless others. It, it's just left to your imagination. Any of these categories, R wrap something around it, stuff something in it, cram a spike through it, <laughs> you know? They're all different ways that you can use your imagination and the ingredients that you have on hand to put great little two-bite appetizers. Maybe this year, because we don't have such a large family, we're not having these large gatherings, maybe the food should be in bite size with the gatherings. Two-bite food for the two people you're having over. So let's consider phyllo dough wrapped around mushroom caps. Uh, how about filling mushroom caps with sausage or spinach or cream cheese? Uh, uh, how about taking little tiny red potatoes, steaming them, carving out the middle, piping some uh, uh, sour cream in there or caviar or um, uh, some Roquefort cheese, blue cheese with walnuts, uh, artichoke, pardon, artichoke hearts, Artichoke leaves are really easy to do. Uh, 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 little uh, oyster shells, uh, little small potatoes. Uh, um, it's just my mind goes crazy thinking about all the little tart cups, shells, little muffin cup things that you can do that you can fill with fish or shellfish or, or, or vegetables or mushrooms or tofu. It's just on and on and on. And really the secret to great hors d'oeuvres and appetizers is to let your imagination be your guide. Keep the ingredients together into things that you like. Keep them harmonious, same sh size, same shape. Consistency of cut is consistency of cook. Gathered together in the same way. And if they look good, if they taste good, if you don't need a knife and fork for them, right? P just popping it in your mouth sometimes is too much. Three bites is when it falls apart. Two bites is exactly where you want to be. And if the hors d'oeuvres precede dinner, uh, you, you don't allow them to duplicate the foods. Don't let them overpower the foods. Don't make them excessively spicy. But you want to get your diner, even if, it's that, even if that's you, thinking, wow, this is a good little two-bite appetizer. I bet the meal is going to be incredible. So... Run, <laughs> run with this idea now because I can't give you a, a whole list of a comprehensive list of, of hot hors d'oeuvres. It's virtually impossible. The list would be listless, limitlessless is what it would be 
because of the global availability of food items, you can get lobsters flown to you in a day. The new products always being introduced, you, you put those things together with your creativity and carefree cooking confidence, you've got license to create absolutely anything that you can imagine. And one of the tricks, the last tip I'll leave you with today, one of the tricks that I used to use in my catering company all the time was to try and find a way to turn an entree into a two bite appetizer. Okay, so think about that for a minute. What is your favorite entre entree throughout the year? What, what, what do you like for dinner the most? And since you're gonna have fewer people, instead of making the big entree, how can you make that a two bite appetizer? Um, chicken Parmesan bite, right? Just little cubes of chicken. Or how about my chicken Wellington idea, puff pastry, tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, piece of chicken, wrap it up and bake it. Chicken Parmesan bites. Uh, what else? Uh, mac and cheese. Do you love your macaroni and cheese? Bake it off. You can sometimes bind it with an egg white or an egg yolk so it stays together in casserole. Cut it into cubes. You have a mac and cheese appetizer. Use a three-part breading procedure, flour, egg, crumb, and you've got something you can put in the oven and not have to deep fry either. What else is your favorite dish throughout the year? Pizza? Do you like pizza? How about some pizza bites? How about some pizza rolls? Use these five categories of appetizers. Take the entree that is most favorite of yours and shrink it down so it comes down to two bites. So this holiday season, let's let's try not to let the holiday spirit fade. I've just... Just because we're missing loved ones so much, it's going to be hard. Let, let's find a new way to appreciate and impress ourselves with great fruit, food and, and the pride that we have in creating it. Let's make up some new appetizers this year. And maybe this is going to be a new tradition. And then maybe when you can surround yourself with everyone you know and love, you're going to have a new appetizer that you created in the year that you can't. Next year, perhaps. Next year. We'll all be together. But for now, please stay safe. That That's the number one priority. And uh, uh, let's, uh, oh, where am I with that? Oh, no. Okay, time out. I need to, uh, I need to fix something here that I didn't do because I want to get into the Carefree Cooks community. And I forgot to go get the pictures. So let's go get these pictures. So I can do this for us. There they are. <laughs> no, you would not believe the holiday baking going on in our Carefree Cooks uh, community these days. Uh, it is a uh, holiday preparation, and I saw a lot of appetizers as well. So we start out with Teresa. Teresa saw this Saturday's pot, uh, this uh, pie dough masterclass. She made herself some little pot pies. Isn't that cute? In little ramekins, right? So brushing up on your pie dough technique isn't, isn't just for desserts. It's for savory items around the holidays. Could you do in your little muffin cup, push some pastry down in there, fill it and put pastry on top? Could you do two bite pot pies as an appetizer this year? I don't know. Uh, Paula did her first sugar cookies ever. This year, really nicely done. First try. Those are tough to ice that way. Nicely done, Paula. Uh, Stephanie is among many of our carefree cooks who followed my mini chicken Wellington class and made up her own. She decided she didn't want to do chicken. She did something else. Melanie did the same thing, and she comments uh, that these two-bite appetizers, one of the great things about them is they freeze and defrost so well without any loss of quality. You can make hundreds of them and freeze them, take them out two at a time. Uh, Lauren is on the puff pastry path also, uh, making a few small changes from mine, but the, you know, that's the idea. You take this two-bite appetizer, you take the category of what it is, and then you make it your own. Uh, Count Jack in for the puff pastry parade also. Uh, he's already thinking about a lot of variations he could make. He said, that's again, that's the idea. Don't do what I do. 
take the idea of what I do and then do what you do, you know? Uh, Mary is on the board as well. She's wrapping puff pastry stuff, stuffing it in there. She's thinking about all kinds of variations also. And Brienne, Brienne is a vegetarian. So she made her not-so-chicken wellingtons with sautéed yellow squash and zucchini and a little bit of butter and garlic. That's the idea. Find the method. Find the answer and then put the ingredients in that you want. And really what you can do is if you take one of the five categories of appetizers and use the ingredients that are right for your diet or your desires, then you're going to have an endless variety of really cool stuff to eat this week, this weekend, this holiday season. Start this week if you want. I don't care. All right, let, <clears throat> let's get back to the what am I for today. It looks to me like if you put egg, bourbon, sugar, cream and nutmeg together, you're probably going to wind up with eggnog. Eggnog is the what am I today uh, <laughs> for uh, the holiday episode. Oh, and hey, by the way, I've got to pass this on. I've got another message for you from Chef Jose Andre, uh, founder of the World Central Kitchen. Not really, but he didn't really send a message, but I, I'm sure that he would like to thank everyone who took advantage of any of my Cyber Weekend offers a, a, a weekend week ago because a percentage of your purchase led to the donation that we were able to put together for Giving Tuesday, and I sent the whole thing to World Central Kitchen so they can continue to feed displaced and disadvantaged people during this time of such acute need. I'm sure Chef Andre, thank you. He thanks you. I thank you. Really cool. Uh, look, if you know someone who's having a two-person holiday party this year and they could use some two-bite appetizers to make them really proud and happy, please like, love, share this video with them so they can have a better holiday season also. And when the holidays are over, uh, so is my holiday cooking success class. There are just a few more sessions scheduled for this year. And in this free class, you're going to discover my five-step plan that outlines exactly how to plan, cook, bake, coordinate, and use the leftovers creatively this holiday season. Go to webcookingclasses.com slash success to find a spot in some of the last classes of the year. Uh, this is Chef Todd Moore. Until next Tuesday, where we take the next steps toward cracking the Carefree Cooks Code, the last one of 2020. This is Chef Todd reminding you that there's a method to your two-bite cooking success. Bye, everyone.